from this vantage point, you can see just how big the Phoenix area is and how it spreads out from Apache Junction in the eastern side all the way over to Buckeye and the White Tank Mountains on the west side. This is a real time of change in which the supplies of water that Arizona has depended on and that the whole Southwest has depended on are in question like never before with this shortage on the Colorado River, with the reservoirs dropping to new lows, and that that's going to require changes in how Arizona has managed water as the climate grows hotter and drier. It's just the reality of less water in the Southwest. It was called the road to nowhere for the longest time because it was really championed by the development community. And the idea was that somehow this would all turn into a city of the future. In fact, the city of Buckeye wants to serve this area. It's all in the city's planning area. They want to plan for a million people out here. I don't think there is enough water here for all the growth that is planned. And even if there was, it would be finite groundwater that would not, would run out at some point. Even if it was here for a hundred years, what after that? Because that water is not replenished. And so once it's pumped, it's pretty much gone. It seems like there's a plan to shift to more groundwater pumping in Arizona among the cities, among developers. And of course, those groundwater supplies are finite. And so there's a lot of discussion in Arizona about what sustainability looks like in the long term as the state receives less water from the Colorado River. We're coming up on the Central Arizona Project Canal which brings the supply of Colorado River water to Phoenix, Tucson, and other cities throughout central Arizona. And it's been a really abundant supply until just a few years ago when uh, we started looking at the prospect of cuts. In 2023, Arizona will take a cut of 592,000 acre feet. The total delivery to central Arizona would be 1,600,000 thousand acre feet of water. So it's a substantial cut. But a lot of that water has been used by farmers in central Arizona. And cities have, for the most part, they haven't relied on that lower priority water, which was at risk of being cut for the water supplies that they deliver to people's taps. That sounds kind of complicated. So <laughs> to what extent do you think people in this area feel like it's a water crisis? Business leaders, elected officials, people like that, they are worried. But one of the reasons why it's not as bad as it might be is that we never grew into the Colorado River supply. Uh, we never built out urban demand for all of that Colorado River water. So we sort of had a buffer that enables central Arizona to take substantial cuts without it translating into people's taps. The challenge for growth to a great degree will be where will water for replenishment come from? Growth has relied on extra CAP water for replenishment for a long time. How soon we'll get to the point where there isn't sufficient CAP water available for replenishment is the big question. People need to take this situation seriously. We need to work at it. We cannot ignore this issue. Uh, but Arizona has a long history of meeting these water challenges, and I think that Arizona will do that again. We're in the city of Peoria, and we've come to a city office building to talk with Cape Powers, who's in charge of their water department. I wanted to just understand more about the mix of water supplies that you have in the city sure. of Peoria and and ask you about the shortage and what it means. We have access uh, to water from the Colorado River, of course, through the Central Arizona Project Canal. Uh, we also have access to salt uh, uh, river project water, SRP water, 
and we also have reclaimed water. The fourth water resource uh, we have access to is groundwater, and we try not to use that. That's something that we want to save for the future. And so if we should see one of those water resources become less available than it has been in the past, we're able to shift and move and wiggle where we get the water from uh, in, a, in a manner that allows us to continue to meet the needs of the community. So this isn't a situation where there's an imminent threat to the city losing its water supply. Nobody's taps are going to go dry, right? That's not what's happening. The real danger here, the big picture stuff, is that you know this community, this, this valley, returns to where we were back in, say, the 1970s and 1980s. You know, back then, we didn't have access to Colorado River water, and the groundwater tables were suffering because of it. And if we don't have Colorado River water, and we don't have a source of supply to replace that, you end up right back where you were then. Part of what drives our industry here is the developers, because you can buy a home here for 40 percent of what you can buy one in california it is putting a lot of stress on the industry because there's a finite number of drill rigs uh, with the amount of drilling that has to take place because of the growth of arizona and the reduction in the colorado river water how busy is it i mean how it Every drill rig that my company has is spoken for until May of June of next year. As Arizona looks to more heavily use groundwater, that's going to mean possibly over-pumping groundwater in places and, and uh, having declining water tables. Now we're drilling down into water that's been there for thousands of years. We're tapping on our bank supply that hopefully will last us throughout the crisis. How long? can we last before our aquifers start to show the effect of what we're seeing in the Colorado River. So hopefully, if you manage it properly and use the water intelligently, then we should be able to manage the crisis. Hi, Kathy. Why did you suggest coming here to this area? Because this is the epitome of irresponsible growth. It is growing on desert lands, raw desert lands, where there's no other water supply except groundwater. We have to look at our water as a whole. And it's really hard to separate one water source from another in terms of sustainability. So if the Colorado River dries up, that's 40% of the water supply of uh, the valley. Right. So imagine this um, duplicated over and over and over again on both sides of that roadway. It feels that way to me that there are no limits really, that we're just continuing to grow and it, the growth is very much looks the same as all the other growth. Wall-to-wall uh, -wall houses. It's unsustainable. It's completely unsustainable. We do not have the water supplies to meet the needs of all this growth for what really needs to happen, which means forever. And so we've kind of turned a blind eye to the fact that we're not managing our groundwater. Well, it's the same thing that we did on the Colorado River. Either we do something about this now or we pay the consequences later. And we're paying the consequences now with the Colorado River because we didn't recognize and deal with the problem soon enough.